Hello everyone. This video is going to cover problem 1023B, looking at the effect of product versus period costs on financial statements. Um, so we're looking at the gun manufacturing company experiencing um, the following accounting events during its first year. Um, so again, we're going to deal with um, looking at our horizontal um, statements model. We're going to start with issuing or acquiring $80,000 cash for issuing common stock. So cash is going to increase by 80,000. And we're going to see our common stock increase by 80,000. And our cash flow go up 80,000. And that is a financing activity. All right, so we've got our balance sheet. Remember, this is the balance sheet right here. Your income statement and your statement of cash flows. Our next one we're looking at, um, we're paying 9,200 for materials used to make the products, all of which were started and completed during the year. So those are all in our finished inventory. So we take out 9,200 for cash and it's an asset exchange going into your inventory. And then we've got a, that also coming out of our cash flow statements for an operating activity. Event three, we're paying salaries of 3,800 to sales and administrative employees. Because those are not um, directly tied to our products, they're selling an administrative. Those are our period costs. So we have 3,800. Let's see if I can write that a little bit nicer. Come out of cash. It's also going to come out of our retained earning because it's that period cost again. So that's an expense right away. We're going to see an income statement change, and then we also see it come out of our cash flow or an operating activity. Our fourth is we're paying wages of 12,000 to our production workers. So these are directly tied to our production. So these are directly tied to our products. So that 12,000 is going to be in that asset exchange. And go into inventory, but we do still have to take it out of our cash flow statements because we paid cash as an operating activity. Number five, we are paying 9,600 for furniture that is used in selling and administrative offices. All right, so this has two parts. So we have to pay for it. So that's part A. So we have our 9,600 in cash. And we're buying office equipment. So because we're buying office equipment, that's an asset exchange. But again, our cash flow statements going to see that decrease. And this is investing because we're investing in some sort of capital for our business. The next part, 5B, we're seeing that depreciation. Okay. Um, the furniture was acquired on January 1. It has $1,600 in estimated salvage value and a four-year useful life. So the reason they tell you it was um, acquired on January 1st is because now we know we depreciate it for the whole year. We don't have to worry about, you know, did we only use it for six months? Did we only use it for nine months? We use it for the whole year. So we start by finding our, take our 9,600 minus the 1,600. Divide that by our four year useful life, and we should find that we get $2,000 in depreciation of the office equipment. Now we are again depreciating office equipment, so that is not directly tied to 
our um, inventory. So we take it out of the office equipment and it's a direct expense. So it's also gonna come out of our retained earnings and it's gonna go into our income statement as an expense. And it's not going to come out of our cash flow because we've already paid the cash on it. But because it's office furniture and it's not, again, directly tied to our production, it's um, strictly coming out of that expense for that period cost. When we do six, six also has two parts. Here we're paying $1,600 for our manufacturing equipment. When we pay for the manufacturing equipment, again, we bought it on January 1, so we don't have to deal with any fractions for months. Um, we're gonna move that into our, do our asset exchange for buying it. So again, we had 38,000 in out of cash. That's going to move into our manufacturing equipment. We are paying cash for that. Oh, sorry, that's not 38,000. 16,000. That's a positive, not a negative. And because we pay cash for it, we're going to see that come out of our cash flow. And we are investing again because we're buying capital equipment for our company. Um, when we look at 6B, we have, we need to depreciate it. We've got an estimated $1,000 salvage value and a five-year useful life. So we're again going to take that 16000 minus the estimated salvage value and divide it by our useful life to get $3,000. So 16 minus 1 is 15, divided by 5 is 3. So when we come down to our balance sheet now, because this equipment is directly tied to our production, when we depreciate the equipment, it moves over to your inventory because that inventory has now used that machinery. So just like the workers get paid their wages, the machinery gets paid its depreciation. You could think of it like that, maybe. But it's depreciation, so again, we're not doing an expense because that depreciation goes into our cost of goods sold. All right, so now we got to look at number seven. We sell our inventory of 38000 and it costs us 1800 to make. So this is my cost of goods sold. It's not making you figure it out. It's just telling you. So we start with our revenue of $38,000. We get cash, we have our retained earnings go up by $38,000. Our revenue is $38,000 for a total of 38,000. And we have an increase in cash of $38,000 and that's operating activities, okay? So then finally, we have our cost of goods sold, which is 18,000. So we see that come out of our inventory and come out of our retained earnings because now we are recognizing that cost of goods sold, sold expense. And we are not doing anything with cash right there. We're just recognizing the cost of goods sold expense. And when you add up the cash, add up the inventory, um, your manufacturing equipment, your office equipment, the common stock, retained earnings, um, and all of the rest of the columns, you should find that you come up with those totals at the bottom. And that is our problem 1023B.